Hey everyone, what's up? It's Mara. We're here hey. in downtown. What? It's super bright. Just adjust the aperture then. It's a, you know, the dial up there? This one? No. Just hold on one second. All right, uh, can you see me now? Yeah, much better. Hey guys, this is Martin here to talk today about these little things right here, variable ND filters, what they do, and if a budget one like this KNF Concept One is worth purchasing. So if you're here just to see if I recommend this filter, the KNF Concept One, then skip to this time signature right here. So we're out here in downtown Covina at one of the brightest times of the day, about 1 p.m., to really show off the purpose of these ND filters. So if you're watching this video, then you probably already know that there are three in-camera components to controlling your exposure. We have the shutter speed, the aperture, and the ISO. However, when you're shooting video, there are certain rules you have to follow that limit your ability to control the exposure in camera. And by this, I'm talking about the 180 degree shutter rule. The 180 degree shutter rule says that your shutter speed has to be one over two times whatever frame rate you're shooting at. So for example, right now I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, which means that my shutter speed has to be one over 48, which is 24 times two is 48. However, with my camera, the Lumix G85, the closest I can get to 48 is uh, 1 over 50, so just, just adjust your shutter speed to the closest it can get to that two times. So I don't want to get too much into this rule since the video isn't about this, but long story short, when you're shooting at a different shutter speed than you're supposed to um, from that 180 degree rule, your footage is either going to look unpleasing or unnatural in most cases. So now that you know that you have your shutter speed locked, all that's left is your aperture and your ISO. In bright daylight, your ISO is probably at its lowest setting already, so now that leaves just your aperture. On a lot of cameras, you probably can adjust your aperture high enough to get that right exposure, and in a lot of cases, that's just fine. The problems come when you want your aperture to be at a particular setting to get a particular look. So let's say, for example, you're shooting in bright daylight, but you want your subject to really stand out by making the background blurry and have that bokeh effect. To achieve this, your aperture is gonna have to be really low, but at the same time, that's gonna let in a lot of light. So that's where this awesome little thing comes in. So ND filters, they just screw on on the front of your lens, and what they do is they darken your image, allowing you to control your exposure without changing any of your in-camera settings. So this one in particular is a variable ND filter. So a lot of ND filters, they only have one tint, and so you still have to change the in-camera settings a lot of times to get that right exposure. So what's cool about variable ND filters is that there's an adjustment ring on the front of it that allows you to adjust the amount of tint that you're putting and it goes from you know, pretty light to completely dark. So in any situation, you can have the camera settings to the way that you want them. You can just pop this ND filter on top and then just darken it till you, till you have the right exposure. So now the question is, is this budget KNF concept variable ND filter worth getting over say like a hundred dollar, a hundred and fifty dollar or up variable ND filter? My answer is that for videos just like this, for YouTube videos or just small projects, I think that this thing is just is more than good enough. Some of the reviews on Amazon say that there's a slight vignetting of, of your image when you're using this. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna put some footage here and let you be the judge. In my case, I haven't found there to be any vignetting yet. I don't know if that's gonna start to occur the more I use it, but for now, it works perfectly fine. Now, would I recommend it if you're doing professional work? Um, in that case, I don't know. It, it probably is better to just get a more expensive one. So in short, yes, I do recommend this thing. It's only around 20 bucks, um, depending on the size that you have to get. Of course, you have to find the right threading for your lens. If you don't know where to find the threading size, it's usually on the front of your lens where there's like some letters around the ring. So just find the size that you need. And if it's higher up, it is, I think it's a couple of bucks more expensive, but it's still really cheap. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Links are gonna be in the description for this filter and all the rest of the video gear that I use if you wanna go and check it out. Please leave a like if you found value in this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'm gonna be doing more videos just like this one. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. One and go. Yeah. Okay, do it one more time now. Uh, turn it up.
one eight three rule. Go.